Hi, this is Kevin from the Mathsaurus, and in this video we're going to be looking at the Tamua paper, the um, test of mathematics for uh, undergraduate admissions. So a lot of UK universities are using this paper now for their uh, maths courses. I've done a load of videos before on the MAT, the Oxford MAT for Oxford, Imperial and Warwick, and there's a lot of overlap actually between the Tamua and the MAT because they both rely on AS level maths basically, and the short answer questions from the mat are also a great preparation for the Tamua. So if you're doing this paper, have a look at the videos I've put out, at least for the short answer questions there as well. Um, I'm going to do this paper in four parts, so four sets of five questions, and um, I'll put everything into a playlist, uh, So and I'll link that below uh, as soon as it's done. I'm going to get at least this whole first paper will be out ready for the 2020 exam and I'm hoping to do the second paper as well pretty shortly uh, so hopefully before uh, this year's paper. Um, let me know in the comments if you've got any other ways of doing these questions and I think you're not sure about. Um, I've tried to approach these as I would in the exam, I'm not saying there aren't other ways to do the questions, there might even be, uh, you know, you might have some better ways um, or some faster ways. These were just the first ways that I came up with as I thought about the questions. So I hope it's useful. Do check out the Matsuros website if you haven't already, where I've linked to all of the stuff I've done on Matt and Step and Tamua and A-Level and GCSE Maths as well. Um, do like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, um, and check out the Amazon store for some recommendations for wider reading. Um, otherwise, let me get on with this uh, video and I uh, hope it's useful. So in question one, we've got a quadratic function on x and its graph passes through uh, the point 1 minus 1 that has a turning point at minus 1, 3. Um, so one thing we could do is maybe write down a general quadratic and you know try to find uh, the quadratic by a more general argument. But we do want to remember here this is a multiple choice test. And so I think my instinct here is just to see if I can get the answer by a process of elimination. So firstly, it passes through the point 1 minus 1. So I know when I substitute in x equals 1, I need to get minus 1 out. Um, and we can scan down these and see which one those are true for. So it is true for A, um, but for B I get minus 1 plus 5, that's not minus 1. Um, C I do get minus 1. D I'm going to get minus 1. E I'm going to get 5, so it's not E. And then uh, here I do get minus 1 again. Okay, so I've eliminated uh, two options here. Um, it's got a turning point at minus 1, 3. So that means when I substitute in minus 1, I get 3. Let's forget the fact that it's a turning point for a second, just the fact that it's on the curve. So if I put minus 1 into the first one, you've got to be a bit careful with the squares here, right? Minus, minus 1 all squared. So that's minus plus 1, that's minus 1. So I get uh, minus 1 plus 2 plus 2, that's 3. Okay, great, that works. C uh, is going to be 1. Yeah, that's 1 plus 2, that's 3. D is going to be 1 uh, minus 2 minus 4, so that one it's not 3, and uh, f is going to be minus 2 plus 4 plus 5, so that one doesn't uh, work there. So we've eliminated two more. Now the fact that it's a turning point at minus 1, 3 means that when I differentiate it and substitute in minus 1, I should get 0. So the derivative of a is minus 2x minus 2, and c is 2x minus 2. Now when I put minus 1 into 2x minus 2, I get minus 3, but when I put it into minus 2x minus 2, I do get 0. So the answer is not C, it's A. So um, although you can maybe make a direct argument here instead, sometimes the multiple choice uh, questions here make it uh, clear. Uh, well, in this case, that was a very good route to go. Okay, so in question 2, it says find the complete set of real values. Um, for the real constant k for which this is positive for, for all real values of x. Okay, so um, so you notice we've got a, a quadratic here, right? So it's x squared uh, plus k plus 2x and then plus 1 minus 2k. So if this is going to be positive for all real values of x, it's a positive quadratic, so we know, you know it's going to be this way up, and for it to be positive for all real values of x, that means it has no real roots, it's not going to get to the axis here. So we know the discriminant here is going to have to be negative. So we can just do the algebra quickly, b squared minus 4ac uh, in the quadratic discriminant, so k plus 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times 1 minus 2k needs to be less than 0. So I get k squared plus 4k plus 4 minus 4 plus 8k has to be less than 0. Uh, so tidying this up, 
we've got just k squared plus 12k is less than zero, or k times k plus 12 is less than zero. So this is a quadratic in k uh, that goes through minus 12 and zero. Uh, so that's going to be negative uh, when uh, k is between um, minus 12 and zero. And that is one of the answers to this question, which is A. Okay, in number three here, it says find the coefficient of x in this expression. And if you think about the x term, well, in the first one, 1 plus x to the 0, that's just 1, so there's no x term in here. Uh, 1 plus x to the 1, it would just be x. Uh, now, if you do binomial expansions, um, in general, okay, well, we know 1 plus x all squared is 1 plus 2x plus x squared, so we might start to guess the sequence here. Um, but in general, when we do the binomial expansions, we're looking at, uh, for the x term, we're looking at the coefficient in Pascal's triangle that's just going down here, right? So it's always going to be just the power times uh, times x here. So it's uh, 3x for this one, the next one will be 4x, and we'll get up to 79x and 80x. So what's this question really asking? It's asking us to sum the arithmetic progression 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way up to 80. So uh, we can do n over 2 times first term plus the last term, or you could do 2a plus n minus 1d if you prefer here. Um, so we've got 80 terms, so that's uh, 40 here times uh, 80 plus 1, so 40 times 81 is going to give us uh, 80 times 40 is 3200, plus 40 is 3240, and so the answer is E. Okay, um, right, in question 4 it says the sequence is given um, by, let's get this all on the page, by x1 equals 10 and x n plus 1 is the square root of xn. Okay, so uh, so we're going to have here, uh, you know, x2 is the square root of 10, which I could write as 10 to the half. x3 is the square root of x2, which is the square root of the square root of 10, or 10 to the half to the half. And so if I get all the way down to x100, I'm just going to keep taking, uh, you know, these half powers and uh, it's going to be 99 times, right? Because um, the first half comes with x2, not with x1. Right, so when you do, um, so if I do 10 to the a to the b, that's 10 to the a times b, right? So actually if I do this repeatedly 99 times, I'm going to get 10 to the 1 half times itself 99 times, which is, now this is, uh, 1 half is 2 to the minus 1, so it's 2 to the minus 1 to the 99, so it's 10 to the 2 to the minus 99, and that puts it into the form of the answer here, which is C. Right, um, so in 5 it says we've got a geometric sequence, the sum of the first 6 terms is equal to 9 times the sum of the first 3 terms, and the 7th term is 360. So I'm just going to try and write this all down uh, in the sequences notation, right? So okay, our geometric progression is going to go a, ar, ar squared, ar cubed, etc. So the seventh term being 360 says that ar to the 6 equals 360. And the formula for the sum of the first six terms, right? s6, that's a times 1 minus r to the 6 over 1 minus r. And for the third term, s3, that's a 1 minus r to the 3 over 1 minus r for the sum of the first three terms, right? And we know that s6 is 9 times s3, so I've got a 1 minus r to the 6 over 1 minus r is 9 times a 1 minus r cubed over 1 minus r. So I get um, the a's cancelling here and the 1 minus r's cancelling. And if you're clever about this, in fact, 1 minus r to the 6, you can write as a difference of two squares. 1 minus r cubed, 1 plus r cubed is equal to 9 1 minus r cubed. And so I can actually cancel out a 1 minus r cubed here. Um, alternatively, you might uh, try and think about that, what you've got left as a quadratic in r cubed, disguised quadratic, that would also be fine. But I like this method. Um, so I get r cubed equals 8 and r equals 2. Um, 
and then we know we want the first term of s which is a and I can use the last bit of information here ar to the 6 equals 360 so uh, 2 to the power of 6 that's 2 cubed squared so that's 8 squared or 64 so I've got 64a is 360 so a is 360 over 64 uh, we've definitely got um, well factor of 4 top and bottom for sure 90 over 16 in fact I could have done 8 there uh, so that's 45 over 8 and that is one of the answers here which is E so I hope that was useful that was just the first five questions of the Tamua from 2019 um, I'll put the rest of this paper into a playlist uh, very soon I've already answered all the questions for this paper so they'll be coming pretty quickly one after another and hopefully I'll do the second paper very soon too. Please like the video if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel, put on the bell notifications and you'll see as soon as I put the rest of this paper out um, or if you're watching this in future years then hopefully it's there already.